I'd like to give you some references, a bibliography of sorts, so if you'd like to pursue this material further, if I've piqued your interest, then you know where to go. So first let me just make a comment, my personal take on self-study. If you want to really understand a subject, these are my suggestions. The first thing you should do is find an excellent text. This is, it's really worthwhile spending some time to find the right textbook for you. And it's not just a matter of finding a good book, it has to be at the right level for where you are. So that's my first suggestion. And these, these are suggestions for, in particular, for self-study. That is, not studying yourself, but studying on your own. My second suggestion is do the exercises. Exercises. If you really want to get to the bottom of a subject, there is nothing like, you know, get a book, try to do every single exercise in that book from front to back. That, that may sound like a huge amount of work, and you might not be able to do all of them. You might only be able to do half. But I guarantee if you try, then you are going to, you're going to understand that material inside out and upside down. So if you want to be an expert, that is the way to do it. You know, you can always take a, take a course and do the homework, you go to the lectures, but there's nothing like getting a book and really studying it on your own. So what book? Let me now give you some of my suggestions for particular books on the material that we've discussed so far. So first one, for real analysis, it, the kind of material that that you would want to understand before really tackling this in in full. So real analysis at an undergrad level. In my opinion, there is no better source of this material than Rudin's Principles of Mathematical Analysis. This is just just a lovely little book. And this, this is actually, this is the book that made me fall in love with mathematics. It's just extraordinary. His exposition is crystal clear. He's got a lot of exercises and they're they tend to be doable. You can uh, you can actually do them, but they also give you a sense of he injects some ideas into the exercises that will pop up later on if you uh, pursue mathematics further, and you'll you'll recognize those ideas. So this is a great introductory text for real analysis. Now for probability, at a roughly at a first year graduate level, here's a few suggestions. My first suggestion is a book by Jacquard and Prater it's called Probability Essentials. And what I like about this book is that it cuts to the chase. They get right to the material that you really care about in a first year grad level probability course. They take a measure theoretic point of view and they don't clutter it up with a lot of a lot of uh, material that really belongs in an undergrad type of probability course. So it's it's concise, and the exercises are, they have a number of exercises. The exercises tend to be maybe on the easy side a little bit. But if you go through, 
you can if you do a large number of the exercises then you'll you'll be able to understand the material and uh, one caveat is well I have the it says the corrected second printing 2004 there's quite a few typos but they're mostly minor sometimes they're a bit annoying but you you can you can get through them and one other caveat is that some of the proofs are not very satisfying the rigor in a couple cases is is not completely satisfying but forgetting the main ideas and understanding this material for a first exposure I would recommend Jacod and Prodder. Another possibility here which is a fairly common book to use for a first year course is Durrett's probability theory and examples. So this book is a little more advanced I would say it's it may be difficult to understand for if you're being exposed to this material for the first time in my opinion this is it's a, it's a great book it's a beautiful book but in my opinion this is the kind of book that once you understand the material and you go back and look at this book you'll just you'll just think it's a beautiful book but for your first exposure to the material it tends to be somewhat abstract also, the material is sort of, uh, the order of the material, it jumps around quite a bit, so it leaves maybe something to be desired there. Another possibility here is Grimmett and Sturzacher. This one is Sturzacher. This one is sort of at a upper level undergraduate slash first level graduate level it's called probability what's it called probability and random processes random processes there's a large amount of material in this but it's quite a long book a problem with this book is that they try to avoid measure theory but then they try to cover material that really requires measure theory so they run into a little bit of a problem and one but on the other hand one thing I, I like about this book is that they have a lot of interesting sort of tricks and techniques in here but at the same time because they include so many things it tends to get sort of bogged down in in details and it's hard to extract the really essential material. One other book which you might see is Kallenberg's Foundations of Modern Probability, but that is a much more advanced book and, and you don't want to... Uh, that one's really if you only once you understand the material in these quite well. So now let me give you a suggestion for real analysis at the graduate level the kind of material the measure theory for the measure theory that I mentioned if you really want to pursue that further to me there's no better text on graduate level real analysis than Fallen's real analysis. Fallen's. This is a it's just a fantastic book for this for this subject. It's very thorough. The exposition is is very clear. They have yeah, they have he has excellent exercises, which they can be quite challenging but they are definitely worth the effort if you put in the effort to solve the exercises it will pay off in terms of your understanding so Jacquard and Prater although they take a measure theoretic view and they do discuss measure theory for 
for probability in particular, they, to me, their exposition of measure theory in terms of uh, integration with respect to a measure and so forth leaves something to be desired. I'm not a big fan of their exposition on that. But so if you really want to get the measure theory, then Falland is it. So it's everything you would want to cover and maybe maybe so, quite a bit more, maybe some more than uh, everything you would want to cover in a first year graduate level real analysis course. One other possibility, so that's my suggestion, Falland. Rudin also has a book for real analysis at the graduate level, which is called Real and Complex Analysis. And as in the case of principles of mathematical analysis, Rudin's exposition is, is just crystal clear. One problem to me with this book, well, I think it is genuinely a problem, is that if you want to learn real analysis, so the problem is he takes all of a, a full year course in real analysis, a full year course in complex analysis, and tries to cram them into one book. And it's just not possible to cover all the material and the number of pages that he allots. So as a result, he ends up skipping quite a bit of material that you, you really don't want to skip. So he, he does have good exercises, uh, as before, but in my view, if you really want, if, if you just want to sort of uh, to go sort of halfway or three quarters of the way, he'll get you there. But if you want to go the full the full hundred yards, then Falland is the way to go. So these are my suggestions for texts. If you are interested in looking up some references, getting a, getting an excellent text, doing some study on your own, these are the sources uh, in particular. I would say Falland and Jakad and Prater for a first place to start.